All right, guys, I'm going to show you how to make a stupid, simple floor system as easy as it gets for your John boat in this video. Hey guys, Anthony Jones here with Brigade Boats and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make a stupid, simple floor system for your John boat. Stick around, I'm gonna show you how I do it. I just finished gutting the rear bench of this boat and turning it into two storage compartments, so check out the video on that. It turned out really, really awesome. He's gonna run a middle seat, so we did a hatch here and a hatch there, so check that video out, guys. Link up above. But let's turn our attention to the floor system. All we're gonna need to do this floor system the most simple way possible is foam board, half inch plywood, fiberglass resin, carpet glue, carpet, some stainless staples, possibly a couple pieces of aluminum on each side as a ledger board. I don't know yet. We're going to see what happens. A couple rivets and that's it. Now what I've got here is a scrap piece of foam insulation board. This is closed cell so it will not soak up moisture. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip out a piece here, a piece there, and a piece there, cut to fit with the floor system. Now check this out, guys. This is just a scrap piece. It's one inch. Check this out. This is the beauty of this product. It planes perfectly in between the ribs to create a subfloor for your plywood. So I'm gonna strip it out to sew to the rib, to sew to the rib, and then I'm gonna run my plywood over the foam and tie it in at the ribs with some stainless self-tapping screws that's how i'm going to accomplish this project the first thing i'm going to do is take this one inch by one inch piece of 1 16th angled aluminum and i'm going to cut some pieces i don't know four or five inches i'm going to cut six of them i'm going to put a piece here i'm going to put a piece in the middle i'm going to put a piece in that corner and the same thing across the front this is going to act as a ledger when i float my plywood over this foam so the first thing i'm going to do is run to the saw and cut this on my chop saw cut six pieces now this is the saw i'm using this is just an old beat up ryobi with a 10 inch dewalt blade um i don't even know what tooth this is let's see 40 tooth it's just the old it's a beat up man this thing is a it's beat okay nonetheless it cuts aluminum that's what we're gonna do got my pieces cut guys and quick note i like to actually cut with the angle up that way this blade won't have the tendency to grab this and that's how this is actually broke and that's how this is destroyed is i used to just cut like this and man, I'll tell you what, that blade will grab this aluminum, buddy, and it'll shoot it through there, and it'll blow the saw apart. So I flip it, but to keep it off of this plate, I use me a little cutting block, and I just hold it slow and steady, man, and it cuts nice. That's how I do it. Now, this foam is one inch. These are one inch. Same size. Okay, so I'm just going to go flush like that and just rivet it. Drill me a hole and rivet it in place, tight to the corner, one in the middle, one in the corner. Got all my one inch by one inch aluminum ledgers in place. And now it's time to cut some foam and stick it in there and then work on getting the wood. All right, and this is the sheet that I'm using purchased at Lowe's. I think this ran 20 bucks. Just gonna cut off the strips to size, put them in between the ribs. Foam is cut and installed. As you can see, I just kind of left it off the ribs, gave myself some space, didn't cut it super, super tight, just enough to get in there and fit nice. And now I'm gonna cut the plywood, but first I gotta pull some measurements. Now what I've done here is I've taken this straight edge, I'm putting it, and I'm using it to butt the side of the hole. See how that does that over there? Taking this scrap of aluminum, doing the same over here, planing over. All right, what that's gonna do is give me something to hook my tape to down here and then I'm gonna go to the edge of that aluminum which is 43 and a quarter 43 and a quarter and that's how I'm gonna get my measurement I'm gonna repeat the process in the middle and then in the other end and um, then I'm just gonna cut my measurement and then I'll come back in after I get my overall square and then I'm gonna jigsaw out where these ribs go but I'll show you that in a minute Okay, got my plywood cut. 
and um i can't get it flat in the bottom obviously because it's hitting the ribs and i forgot to mention this is exterior grade half inch plywood exterior grade just means that the glue in between the plies um, is moisture resistant so the plywood won't delaminate but it does not make it waterproof so we're still going to seal this thing at least the top and the sides and fiberglass resin but first we got to get it all cut and fit so what i'm going to do is i'm sticking it in that side's higher than this side and i'm just going to mark where my ribs are and i'm going to measure in i honestly i could probably just eyeball this like so and just jigsaw it and see if that fits that looks good maybe replicate that over here i don't know you know paint a happy little or draw a happy little rib in my plywood jigsaw that out and do that on both sides and then get it to fit All right, test fit, and it fits pretty good. Um, I'm hanging up over here, and I don't really understand that because I cut everything square, which tells me, obviously, the boat is manufactured a half inch out of square from bench to bench. Big surprise, not really. They're all like that. So I'm going to make a mark and trim a little bit more off and then uh, check it again and just keep making adjustments until I get everything with nice reveals to allow for the carpet. And uh, then we could add the resin. Got it in, and I think I could live with that. Reveals are good enough to wrap in carpet. Let's get some resin on it. This is what I've had success with sealing the wood in the past. Just Bondo fiberglass resin. Two-part, mix it with a hardener. That activates it. The more of this you use, the faster that cures. Obviously, your outside temperatures um, are also a variable. I'm just going to pour it in here and mix them together. Spread it out and brush it. Try to get it on nice and thick do the edges as well guys i did a video full length video step by step on the whole process of this stuff and how it works i even show how i submerge some of these parts in water for more than 24 hours so check that video out but right now i'm just going to breeze through this All right, resin is cured. I'll let this actually sit overnight. So back at it again. And uh, you can see there's like some imperfections and orange peel or whatnot on it. So what I'm gonna do is I take my DeWalt sander with 50 grit and I'm just gonna sand the whole top surface. I'm not trying to burn through the resin and hit wood. I'm just trying to knock down some of this orange peel and then give the resin surface um, some scuffing to give that carpet glue something good to bite to. All right, all sanded. Time to carpet the floor panel. Let's talk about what I'm using to do that. I've got indoor outdoor carpet adhesive. Get this from Lowe's. What I also get from Lowe's are these plastic spreaders. For some reason, Home Depot doesn't sell them, so give them at Lowe's. Buy them for a dollar and some change. Out of that one, I cut it into three pieces. So I get three for one, and then when they're smaller, you could get inside the glue tub. A little bit more work, but uh, works out nice for me. Using T50 quarter inch staple stainless. It's only a matter of time before they rust out, but with the stainless, it prevents that. I'm gonna use some uh, pliers just to grab the carpet and pull it around the backside, get it real tight, and then I'm gonna staple it down with a wind staple gun I got on Amazon. Of course, I got a compressor air hose to operate that. And then the carpet is from Home Depot. I shop on both sides of the street, cousins. So uh, this is the same carpet I've used in some past projects. It's budget friendly. It's not your 16 or 20 ounce bass carpet by no means, but it's easier on your pocketbook. That took a little bit longer than I wanted because I ran out of glue and I had to use an old tub that I had left over from a long time ago and that stuff was super thick, but I got it all spread. The key note, guys, is when you spread this glue out, make sure there's not like a big lump or a big drip somewhere. Small stuff, not a big deal, but big lumps or, or just big um, patches of it that hadn't been evenly spread with these grooves in it, what it'll do on this outdoor carpet, it'll actually bleed through. So you just want to spread it real evenly and um, you, you'll be good. But if you just go to pasting it on there and giving it on there real thick, it'll actually, that carpet will absorb it and it'll show through on the other side. So you don't want that. 
But I'm going to flip it and then we're going to staple it. All done, ready to install in the boat. It's super, super simple, guys. I've got my drill with a Phillips, and I've got these screws, stainless steel, ordered on Amazon. Leave the link in the description. Pack of 100 for 10 bucks. These are self-tapping screws, stainless, one inch. It's enough to get through, bury down into the carpet, and then have another half of an inch. I'm gonna tap into the ribs. I'm gonna put one here, one here, one where I put my ledger, so on on the back side. It's gonna hold the floor down. If you ever need to remove it, just pull the screws, pull the floor, good to go. And these screws hide pretty well. You can see them. If you want to, uh, if you want to, you could take a little dab of gray paint and hit them with a Q-tip. I've done that before. Not super concerned on it with this project because to me, it doesn't really bother me. And this is a budget deal and time is money. But uh, turned out really, really nice, guys. Super excited with how this turned out. Nice and tight fit, as you can see. Now, hopefully this customer will be bringing me this boat back in the near future to redo his front deck. But for now, we got the floor decked out. Stupid, simple floor job. And then I've got the rear bench all tricked out for him for storage. Turned out really, really nice. And uh, if you haven't seen this video, go check that out. Rear bench, storage system, real easy to do. DIY friendly, balling on a budget. But the floor system is done. We're out of here, guys. Thanks for watching.